Perhaps that might be totally ruled out now because of okay. this extension that they have. But okay. some people will also, you know, say that INEC is not the one on trial here because okay. INEC did reiterate several times. In fact, at the Council of State meeting, it was reported that they said that they were more ready now, mm. uh, even though we say readiness is relative mm. or absolute in terms of being 100%. Yeah. But INEC says they were more ready now than they were in 2011, yet they were able to have credible polls in 2011. Yeah, but, should, should, but, we, should we really be saying, because what we found out was that some states were willing to give concessions to people to ensure that, you know, we, at least in Lagos, we, we saw that meeting between the governor and the rec, telling the recs to ensure that, you know, these things are brought closer to the people, yeah. extend, it to, extend it to their polling units, give day offs, pleading with uh, private private sector employers mm -hmm. to ensure that their staffs are able, members of staff are able to get PVCs. And, and we saw that in the states that were allegedly affected by this uh, low distribution of PVCs. Yes. We didn't see similar efforts, say, at the federal level, for instance. So do you think that this could actually be a fed and accompli has been propagated by some people? No, I think that, in fact, INEC is an independent electoral institution, and it has the primary constitutional responsibility to organize and oversee the process of elections. And so, by logical extension, when there is a, when there is a problem with the logistics, we cannot blame the federal government. We cannot blame the state governments. We must blame INEC. INEC, of course, can work with other stakeholders, including all of these people you've mentioned, all of these institutions. But the primary responsibility of conducting these elections in a credible manner will have to fall uh, with, with, with INEC. I, I think that INEC has done well. But, you, you know, we shouldn't over-politicize the extension because, in fact, the extension affords INEC to become even more effective. My point, in fact, in the original intervention I made was that, look, we shouldn't even have the kind of logistical nightmare that we have because we've had four years to prepare for it. This has been a very predictable process in the sense that by, nine, by 2011, we already knew constitutionally that this government is going to live in another four years and that in 2015 we will be due for elections. And there is, there is a reason why we have this kind of time gap. The reason is for the organizing institution to make sure that the process for organizing the elections in the next four years, you know, goes very well. So if it hasn't gone, go, gone very well, it means INEC is, is due uh, for, 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 for criticism. But, but I'm happy that, you know, uh, the extension has been granted and that people will now have the latitude to... Chairman, in just a moment, before, yes. before, we, go, before uh, we go to that... I'm going to so that you just respond okay. to it because I'm looking at the time mm -hmm. at the same time. So yeah. let's just quickly listen to it until we we'll just take the next questions afterwards. We believe that May 29th is sacrosanct, and we are keeping our eyes on that date when President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan will be sworn in as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, by the grace of God. <coughs> INEC, from all indications, INEC is not fully prepared for the elections. These are issues, there are issues with the PVCs the permanent voters' cards. Almost 30 million people are yet to get their PVCs, despite the fact that the date of distribution was extended. Ballot boxes are reportedly inadequate. Adequate training of staff for the election had not been concluded, and other problems facing INEC. Quite clearly, the shift in election date is meant to save INEC from monumental embarrassment. I would like to reiterate that the PDP is ready for the election any day. We are querying the INEC for some aberration in the distribution of PVCs. How can Borno State, which is under siege, register more PVC collections than Lagos State? The INEC might have allowed this distribution of these cards to be tampered with. We hope that INEC will now use the extra time it has given itself to perfect its methodology. So there you go, Amanda, making his point about what they think of the entire scenario.
Well, that, that sounds very much like your point as well. Is, is that the point you were making as well? Well, you know, I wouldn't uh, speak in such a partisan, uh, partisan tone. I, I'm just looking uh, from outside in. And I think that logistically, you know, if you're not prepared and you grant an extension of time in order for people to get access to the very essential tool they need to vote, that can only be a good thing. The, the date that, you know, is sacrosanct, constitutionally speaking, is May 29. Any time between now and May 29, all kinds of adjustments, you know, can happen. And I think that whether the, PD, the PDP or the APC or any of these other parties shouldn't over-dramatize the change. What's important is, are we following the process? Are we making sure that we widen the net of those who are potentially going to vote? Are we making sure that those who need the materials that they need, the PVCs that they need to vote? Are they getting them? INEC could claim that, well, the PVCs may be at the collection points and people are not collecting them and you can't hold them responsible for that. There's an argument about that. But then INEC also, I suspect, has um, a public enlightenment uh, unit that they can then go and, you know, do public sensitization uh, campaigns to say, look, the PVCs are now there. Please go to your point and collect them. So I think that, you know, elections are always this way. We, we shouldn't over-problematize. Uh, just one, just one question, things. though. Yes. You say that we shouldn't. Well, the political parties shouldn't yeah. over-dramatize mm. this. Yeah. And it would seem that so far we have focused on INEC mm. because, yes, INEC announced the shift in date. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the date, the shift in date, the, the duration of that shift, maybe yeah. if INEC were not prepared and, you know, had to still distribute PVCs and had, maybe they would not look at six weeks, mm. assuming this was for themselves alone, mm. um, you know. But six weeks is, is quite a while. Yeah. Do you also think... Uh, <coughs> Do you really believe that INEC is the one on trial here? No, I don't think any institution is on trial because we are, as I said, still within the constitutionally allowable period. So if INEC exercises its, its uh, right to extend the period during which the PVCs may be collected, within constitutional allowed period. That's a fantastic thing. What amount it, of drama will be allowed? Because we, no, we, 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 we cannot shift polls and think that there will be no consequence the, the, for the, it. The drama that, that we shouldn't allow is the one that negates the constitutionally guaranteed date of May 29th. And that doesn't seem threatened as far as I can see. What we are looking for is to make sure, you, may, you said something about, and made an interesting point about how the dynamics, you know, in 2011 may be different from what is happening now in 2015 and I absolutely agree with that. We've had people who have, you know, 14 years, 14 years old in 2011 or 18, they are now eligible to vote, meaning that we constantly need to update the kind of, you know, materials that we need in order to validate those who will vote. So what this means is that INEC is, political parties may, you know, be episodic in the way they think about elections, but INEC cannot afford to be so episodic. They need to make sure that they constantly constantly update their processes. And this, uh, and four years allows them to do all of this. The fact that they haven't done it up to the point where they are even suggesting that on the day of the election itself, we may grant PVCs. Just allow me to come in here. It seems a bit um, um, unacceptable to me. They need to make sure that they get these things right. Let's do uh, this very forward. quickly yes. if we can, because uh, moving forward yes. is very key here. And uh, the political parties, the players, and even most Nigerians have agreed to this shift and it has also afforded INEC uh, an ample time to fix all the anomalies or lapses. Yes. In moving ahead as communication expert, so many comments, actions, inactions are already in the space to the extent that some are already thinking of so many stories. First we are getting to see the denial of uh, uh, Jagar resigning. We are getting to hear stories of uh, an interim government. We're getting to hear stories of election won't hold on that day. What should be the talking point now from government and those players that will further tell Nigerians that, look, this particular date chosen will not be dished again? Mm. I think that what, you know, you raised an important point about 
uh, whether the government has a role in creating um, awareness and you know making people have confidence in the system. And I think that what the government can do, and I think I've, I, you know, the government has done that up to uh, an extent. What the government can do is to say, look, we, you know, we are not worried about um, the potential derailment of the process. What we know and are committed to is that on the day when we need to hand over to a new government, May 29th, we must respect that day. Any other shifts or you know, adjustments within the same process that is constitutionally allowable, I, I, think, I think shouldn't, um, shouldn't raise uh, so much um, you know, drama. One, last, one point I need to make, um, uh, Chamberlain, is, is that although Nigeria is a country within the global community, and that the kind of things that we do here can like, normally excite interest outside of this country. I think we should be careful uh, not to allow uh, countries outside of Nigeria intervening in our process. And I say this because, you know, we've had a very unfortunate experience in this country in, in, in 1992, 1993. We've had all kinds of countries, you know, giving press statements, making all kinds of innuendos about the Nigerian process. You know, what I think we should emphasize, both as citizens and as a country, is that this election is ultimately a Nigerian election held by Nigerians for Nigerians. And we should not allow any country, including the United States, to be making statements, you know, saying they are deeply disappointed. This is a Nigerian process, and Nigerians must lead it. Whatever adjustments that we have, whatever quarrels and, you know, contentions we have concerning our electoral process is essentially a Nigerian experience. What we should emphasize, though, internally is to make sure that, first of all, you know, the process is transparent and credible, and that there is no violence that characterizes our politics. So this is essentially a Nigerian experience, and we'll, I think we'll get it right. A good place to live it. Uh, Dr. Austin Tam George is the Director, Institute of Communication Studies in Lagos. He's also a former lecturer, University of Cape Town in South Africa. Thank you for coming on today. Thanks for having me. We'll be back. We've got another perspective coming up on the program in just a moment. Join us again. <laughs>